be my fingerwear style. I see you out there, Andre. I don't know what fingerwear style means. Anyway, it's time for everyone's favorite debate segment, Attack or Defend, where Mr. X and Uber have intense arguments. Very intense. With each other. Super intense. For your and my entertainment. Our first topic relates to the Baby Bay and the Shocks coach, Krusty, who formerly coached the Uprising. Krusty coached Boston to a 10-0 and stage three. Flawless. And they've lost six straight since releasing him. We're also hearing that they may be having internal issues now. So the point is, releasing Krusty was the worst transaction by any team this season. Mr. X, you can go first attack or defend, my friend. I'm going to attack this. I'm going to say the worst uh, transaction all season long has been London trading away Fisher to the Gladiators. They turned the Gladiators into a contender. With iRemix as their main tank, uh, we're talking about them completely out of it, probably below Dallas, probably around where Florida and Shanghai is, that they gave one player away that turned them in to a contender. And I mean, they've even come out and beaten, uh, I know, the London Spitfire on occasion. So I'm going to go with something that we can actually see in-game with Fisher. I think, like, London didn't lose so much, but they did give some gain. I think Boston lost Krusty and gave him over. So you actually have a <laughs> double net loss there. And you can see now not only that, that their team is struggling communication-wise, I don't think the, the Korean players have much of a voice on the team now. And the shock is, like, Krusty is God. We're, we're a new team. We're completely changed. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I got to go with Mitch here because, I, agreed, it's like they didn't have anybody to replace him. Meanwhile, Jester at least was still on London. It wasn't like they gave yeah. away the, one uh. of their best assets with nothing in return. So, got to go with that. So, next up, big part of the Valiant's win over the Gladiators in Week 3 was winning the main tank battle. Fate and Fisher were somewhat even in terms of Winston play statistically in this matchup. But when you look at their Reinhardt stats, you start to see a convincing case for the Valiant's fate. The Valiant's main tank dominated every statistical Reinhardt category, including recording more than twice as many final blows and better than eight more elims for, te for, exactly for 10 minutes. Exactly twice as many final blows. Yeah, it's very good. He also died significantly less, 8.5 to 5.8. With the importance of Reinhardt in Stage 4, the point will be that Fate is actually a more valuable main tank than Fissure in the current meta. So Uber, attack or defend? Uh, I'm going to attack this. I think especially in terms of value to their team, Fisher sort of can't be denied. I think it's also the mentality that he brings into that roster. He's definitely raised their level of uh, commitment to the game. I also think that particular match is not a great example because the Valiant targeted him very hard. And the Valiant's DPSs were doing a better job of targeting Fisher than the Gladiators were to fate, for example. The Doomfist against the Reinhardt on Oasis, that's brutal. I mean, look, I'm going to defend this. I think it's very close. I think Fate and Fisher are up there with, you know, two of the best tanks in the league right now. I think uh, I, I would go with with fate just because I think you can play uh, the Reinhardt you can play a little uh, Arisa he's very good Arisa player and then his Winston's been good and also he was doing a lot of great Winston stuff earlier in the season when they had Envy as an off tank you can make an argument you know you take you know, Envy, Space, Bishu, Void put them all in Reinhardt oh, so you think Envy fight's an MVP candidate? no no absolutely not. all right all right well, I I gotta, I, definitely an MVP candidate. I, I gotta go with Mitch here I think it's really close and I, I do agree I attempted to make an argument yeah, yeah, like fate that. The Fate is 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 a strong tank, but you also I think have to say Fate like has the better main support between Custom and Big Goose right yeah. now, which helps really keep him alive. Like Fisher, I think with some extra support could be even better oh, than yeah. he is right oh, now. It, that would be scary. All right, so he's, he's on that island at the moment. One last one for today. It's always it doesn't, one we don't know about. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't need any setup. We can just we can that I don't know about. You just take a take a take a look. Yeah, so they open up that fight with a Earth Shatter from Fearless, which goes right into the shield of Kuki. They got nothing from that. So then they're also using Valkyrie during this, which isn't a bad idea, right? You use Valkyrie to back up some of the tanks to start to go in. You can get aggressive. So the Shatter doesn't work. Then they try and go around, and Damon shoots a really long range graph. Hits Jaehong. Jaehong uses Transcendence. They throw in the Self Destruct over the top. Obviously, he doesn't get anything from there. Then you had players start to fall. Free Fuel comes in late with his Transcendence, and that ha that's how you end up using all your ultimates and not getting anything. Don't have a replay. Well, thank you, Uber, for <laughs> ult miming for the casting. Mr. X, attack or defend the ult miming. Why didn't you have a replay there? It was a very complex like play you were doing. I, I don't know. I, I, that's where the better <laughs> argument. I'm gonna go and you attack this. I don't know what the hell that was. I, I don't know why you're doing that while I'm talking. I'm trying to break down a serious play. <laughs> I'm no, no one wouldn't do that. No okay. one wouldn't be out there. Uh, he, no one does the, the freaking out. <laughs> I defend this. He was just talking for like five minutes straight. I had to give some it's a sort complex of, play. Some sort of entertainment to the audience who were just falling asleep by that point. How many times do you want to say free feels transcendence, bro? So uh, I, I, I feel for you. So yeah. Really, really, like I have to give this to Uber again. I think it was great given the circumstances. I'm still undefeated. But, but really, <laughs> but really, but really, we need a telestrator for those segments so that we could actually have them. So. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, Uber may have won. He did what he could in a, in a situation, but production, this is on you. Give us a. I want to be able to show how late free right. <laughs> transcendence is all the time. <laughs> I'm taking this one over. We've got one more little topic to look at here as well. And one has definitely come up a lot in discussion is the facial hair conversation. Uh... Now, if you have a look here at your beloved paragon of justice and all those good Monty, has got a little bit of growth here. Yeah, yep. Monty and Matt. No, it's terrible. I hate, my facial hair is awful. So, uh, so you know, you gonna attack this? Oh, absolutely. Like my facial hair is actually terrible. So I can really only grow like a mustache and then like a triangle here. So I look like a musketeer from like you know the the what 17th century. <laughs> it looks it looks like I the should soul be like patch. having like a like a tabard and like waving a rapier around. It's, it's really don't bad. don't worry about me with that. You're, I'm never gonna shave my beard. So your beard you're looks fine. Great. Yeah, I yeah, shaved yeah, today fine. as well just in case he tried something underhanded. <laughs> I, and I had plausible deniability. <laughs> Thanks for indulging yeah, me there. Terrible. <laughs> I agree with you guys. What goes around comes around. <laughs> yeah.